Hey guys, Bone here with another edition to the Cigar Stories with Mr. Bone playlist. Be sure to check out the full playlist here. But today, I'm going to tell you about two guys that I saw killed in jail. So a lot of you guys have been asking for jail stories and prison stories. I'm going to tell a couple crazy stories from Port Manatee Jail in Bradenton, Florida. One of those things permanently ingrained in my memory, something I'll never forget. It was dinner time. I was in high security awaiting for, at this point in time, awaiting trial for shooting a man. And HS, or the high security section, it's where the criminals that are looking at life in prison or more than life in prison are all stationed. So I'm in here with murderers. Uh, for example, if you, and if you wanna hear these stories as well, comment below and I'll tell these stories too. I had a roommate once who killed both of his parents with a baseball bat while I was in this same section. I had another roommate who, when he was 16, he choked during sex his girlfriend to death, and then he went to prison as a juvenile and got out. And then I was his roommate there at Port Manatee the second time when, after he got out, the second girl he killed during sex by choking her to death. And uh, actually a really decent guy otherwise. I think he had some very serious issues. Okay, so enter high security, Port Manatee. It's very small unit because there's not a whole lot of these guys. It's the worst of the worst. And there I am eating dinner, sitting there at my little table. It's this table with four chairs, individual table with four chairs, it's got a chessboard, checkerboard in the middle. And it's Friday night and I'm eating my spaghetti dinner. And I'll always remember this, you know, it's just whatever spaghetti cheapest they can get donated, so it's got the red, crappy looking sauce and it's just spaghetti heaped on your metal tray there, so I'm eating. And I sit by myself, I keep to myself, and normally I'm at the table by myself. So these two gentlemen, a Cuban gentleman that was in for murder and a Mexican gentleman who had some cartel involvements, I don't remember exactly what he was in for, but he was supposedly this big time cartel guy, but he was in under a false identity and they were still trying to figure out who exactly he was, whatever, whatever. Anyway, him and the Cuban gentleman are eating together and the Cuban dude was really cool. Uh, he was in for murder, but he was a cool dude, chill dude. Everybody liked him. So the guards liked him. So that'll lead into this story a little bit. You need to understand that he was an amazing gray man, okay? So he fit the profile of what he wanted the guards to think he was rather than what he really was, and that's how he was able to do what he did, okay? So these are all learning experiences, okay? I, st I share these stories so you can learn from them. And anyway, they're speaking Spanish, they're hanging out. The Cuban guy didn't speak very good English. He, uh, I had talked to him a few times. He showed me, you know, some pictures of him at Guantanamo Bay, which was really interesting as a, as a soldier back in the day, ex-military Cuban guy, uh, older guy, you know, these, both, these, both of these gentlemen were older to me, older at that. I was very young. I was 18 at the time. So to me, older could have been 55. It could have been 65, somewhere in between there. And the Cuban guy bald and he was a hilarious guy. He had a, one of his testicles was like this big because of a hernia or something. And, and uh, <laughs> occasionally he would show people his ginormous testicle, just very, very uh, comedic in, in, in jail. You have to understand it's all guys and, and you know, it's anything goes slapstick humor. So here we are, these guys are eating together and the one gentleman says to the other, the Mexican gentleman in Spanish says to the, the Cuban, the Cuban gentleman, the Cuban gentleman in Spanish says to the other, they're at a table, one table over for me. And if you don't have any respect for me, I won't have any respect for you. And he got up and the Cuban guy every day at the end of dinner, at the end of every meal, he gets, he goes over to one of the guards and he gets the mop mop bucket and mop set up from the guard and he comes in and he cleans the the pod we call it the pod the hs pod so what that allows the guys that do that they do it because they get a little bit more freedom they get to stay out longer than the rest of the inmates and they and they get to be out of their cell a little bit longer because the the high security is locked down most of the time so 
this guy's out there, you know, mopping normally when we all have to be back in, and cleaning and doing all this when we're already back. The rest of us are back in our cells. And the guards are not supposed to let the mop ringer and, 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 and bucket and everything come in until everybody's locked down. Because, you know, it's a mop. It can be used as a weapon, right? So they don't let that come in normally. Well, the, the guard, he, he's, he's got on really good terms with the guards, very friendly with everybody, and he, he mops every day. So they trust him. So he gets the, he goes over and asks the guard for the mop, tells him he's done. And the Mexican guy, when they had this fight, the Mexican guy came and sat at my table right across from me. So you're the Mexican guy. I'm eating. I didn't say anything to him. I just kept eating my, my own business. Whatever. These guys obviously just had their fight or argument. These old guys, nobody really thinks too much of it. So he's sitting at my table, though. Cuban guy goes to get the mop, brings the mop in, starts mopping, whatever, doing his thing. And he, when he gets close to the Mexican guy, now this Mexican guy had some sort of a problem with his head. He had a, a like a plastic piece in his head where he had been shot or something happened in the past and he had, so part of his head was soft here and he was always messing with people, you know, like making, you know, pushing it in or doing something weird. Anyway, the guy had had some sort of a, a part of his skull had been either blown off or accident removed. I don't remember exactly, but so part of, he had like a plastic insert in his head there, Mexican guy. Well, the, the Cuban guy, as he starts to get, he's mopping, doing his thing, as he gets close, he's directly, you're the Mexican guy right there, right in front of me. The Cuban guy's behind him, mopping the floor. Well, he, he lowers the mop slowly into the, you know, sets it down and he takes the mop ringer up, up off of the, and I'm seeing this kind of out of the corner of my eye while I'm eating and I'm not thinking much of it at first until I see the, the Cuban guy pull the mop ringer up and then ho hoist it and it's big. I don't know if you guys know it's the big yellow mop ringer. It's, it's the bucket, you have the mop bucket and you have the mop ringer and the mop ringer is like this big. It probably weighs, I have no idea, it's been so long since I've seen one, but it's 20, 30 pounds maybe. Really hard plastic, almost like a Zytel. And so it can be definitely used as a weapon. Well, he grabs it by the handle and he swings it up and puts it over on his shoulder. And he comes and he takes a couple steps. He was only like three yards behind the guy. Two steps, like a cat, two quick steps. At this, as soon as he pulled the mop ringer off, I'm paying attention. So I'm here, there's not a whole lot I can do. I kind of just instinctively went like this. And at that point, the Cuban guy, wham, he just slams the guy on top of the head with the mop ringer. Well, the guy's head, guy just goes down like this. And then I, of course, get up and take a couple steps back at that point. And the Cuban guy just proceeds to smash the guy's head to a pulp with the mop ringer. He's just standing over the guy, smash, smash, smash. And the guy's blood and everything from his head being smashed squirts into my spaghetti. Okay, so it's just unbelievable situation. Yeah, pretty nasty, pretty gruesome. I'll never forget every time I eat spaghetti now, I, I think about, you know, the guy's brains and, and, and bloods that was in my spaghetti that time. I didn't finish my spaghetti. I had basically lost my appetite at that point. But hey, guys, um, I'm getting a little long-winded here. I was going to tell you guys the story of the guy that, since Tiger King came out, reminded me of Tiger King and the story of his death. I saw two guys die when I was in high security and I was there for 11 months, 29 days, and while I was there, two guys died. If you want to hear that story, comment below. Comment below because this is now becoming a long video. I need to do a, a different video on that death. But if you want to hear the story of the Bradenton Tiger King dying, hey, he didn't have tigers. He just redneck dude. But uh, if you want to hear the story of his death, comment below, and I'll talk about it. The funny thing about this Mexican guy, really is that nothing really, nobody knows what happened to him after this. Of course, we're in jail, so we don't have a whole lot of information, but we're avid newspaper readers in jail. And we always check the newspaper. For example, I was on, I was a big story in the newspaper. I had just shot a guy, so everybody knew who I was as soon as I got there. They're always reading the newspaper, and they're like, oh, this guy will be here soon. He shot somebody. So as soon as I came in, they knew who I was, and they knew who I shot. It was a big problem for me, too, because the guy I had shot was connected. So then they put me in a unit with... Uh, where they were the, that same unit I was in they tried to kill me again I had an assassination attempt there so I can maybe tell that story too 
but it's also public information. So the you can look up the aggravated battery case of the 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 cartel guys that tried to kill me. You can see what happened to those guys. They uh, they got the short end of that stick. But I don't know how much I can talk about that because the charges were dropped. So anyway, if you want to see the future video, comment below. I'll show the, share the future video. And the really strange thing is. This guy obviously died, this Mexican guy, but nobody ever heard anything. He was not in the obituaries. And the funny thing is, is the the the, the local Manatee government or the Bradenton police or whatever didn't know who he was. They He told us that he was in there on his cousin's name. You know, he told everybody that, or not everybody, but he had told a couple people that told a couple people because shit travels in jail. But apparently, uh, I think the police kind of just wiped it off the map and, and uh, when he died, they kind of swept it under the rug. I don't know. I don't know if the Cuban guy got more charges. I don't know. We never heard anything else about the Mexican guy that, that was killed there, which is crazy. The other guy that died, it was in the newspaper. So I don't know. But comment below if you want to hear the other story. And thanks for watching. Bone out.